Okay, welcome back to Insunu Yezu. Once again, we want to remind you, if you need a copy of the book, you could go on your computer to catholicbook.net, or if you're in the Canton area, you may stop in here at St. Raphael's Book Center, and we do have them in stock. We're continuing now with looking at the scripture. We're on John chapter 19, verse 25. We're going to take a look at this and see what John has to say in chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Now, standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clophus, and Mary Magdalene. <coughs> When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his home. There's the presentation now for the priesthood of Mary to care for the priest and the priest to love Mary, okay, as John did. That's the significance of this. Then we look at the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 14. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer, together with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. So they are devoted to prayer, which was the Jewish custom. So they are devoted to prayer in line with what Christ himself has taught them. Okay. So we see here the significance. And remember that in Hebrew, there are no words for brother or sister. The word brother and sister means universal body, or brethren means universal body. Okay? So keep that in mind. Also, the number three, again, in significance in relationship to Christ. Remember, he fell three times on the road to Calvary. Okay? All right, next now we look in our book on page 44 that says here, priests who do not collaborate with my Immaculate Mother will be stifled in their existence of their priesthood. I myself choose to have my mother at my side at the hour of my supreme sacrifice. I gave her to my beloved disciple John, which we just saw, so that all my priests would understand that my mother's place is at the side of every priest of mine, especially when he stands at the altar to offer sacrifice to the Father and to speak and act in my name. Not the laity. So, it's the priest and Mary that stand at the altar. So the Oron's position is done by the priest. Eucharistic Prayer 5, which points that out, it's the first one for reconciliation. Before he outstretched his arms between heaven and earth as the sign of everlasting love, 
It's not the people in the pew. It's the priest, like Christ. That's what the Mass is. It's a continuation of Calvary, of the Last Supper. And so it's the priest who's acting in persona Christi at the Mass. So when laity do this or this, what are you doing? You're extent, you know, the, the priest says, the Lord be with you, and you got people doing this. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Look what you're doing. I've seen people do this. Yes. I don't remember people doing this, this, and this until they told us during the Our Father we should stop holding hands and instead maybe raise our hands. Not explaining how we should be doing it, but after we started that, all this other stuff happened. Not before. I don't remember. Most of the evangelicals, if you watch on Sunday morning, watch like Jimmy Swaggart or this other guy that's on Sunday morning on Channel 92, you will notice that's what they do. There is no sacrifice being offered. So, for them, this is a gesture. If you notice, if you watch any movie on the life of Christ, those that were the accusers of Christ did this. Which was the Roman sign. I'm just saying we, we got confused. That's yes, all. exactly. You're exactly... 100% correct. We are totally confused. It's really not our fault. No. 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 The Lord's Prayer, too, a lot of people, their lifetimes, they'll hold hands across the aisle. I've seen that. I don't know where they're going with that. Where, where are you going with that? I don't know. If you look at the words, it's a prayer of petition, not a prayer of community. That's right. It's a petition. We're asking. Give us our daily bread. You know, Give even us. in the the uh, uh, old liturgy, the, the the if you go to the Latin liturgy, you know, you're praying the Our Father in this manner. Where this other stuff come in, you know, what you know, this new new liturgy idea. If you read the documents of Vatican Council II. The only thing that has changed is the fact that the Mass is in English. Yeah. That's it. But I have kind of brought this up to certain people, and I'll have them basically call me a Pharisee. Yeah, I they what? They call me a Pharisee. They're the Pharisees. Pharisee. No, because yeah, I am the law, law of the, you know, following the law and the rules. I am. Well, all this came about because of the charismatic movement. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying. It's, it was brought in by the evangelicals. People saw this and they figured this is something nice to do. Yeah. We enough don't enough change enough. the liturgy. The church, okay, is the authoritative teacher. There's the rub. Nobody respects authority nowadays. No. Right. No authority secular or church. Do you think, Father, that possibly uh, there's some fear, some uh, 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 approaching the laity at this point? Uh, yes, and that's not, it's not correct. I, I, I totally understand what, what you're saying, but that the powers from the pulpit should, are they, are they in fear to correct the situation? I don't know, uh, really, at this point. Um, 
Because if you go back a few years, back to the, let's go back to the, um, to the 90s. This did not occur. There was a lot of reverence in some dioceses uh, for the liturgy. What has happened is secularization. was brought in to the church. And by this I mean when we make things ordinary like they are outside and we get away from the sense of the sacred then it becomes ordinary place. So what happened was this became ordinary. People are on the street, hey, how you doing? So they bring it in church. You see people walking in the stores holding hands, husband and wife. That's natural because they're married. Okay, you're bound together. That's fine. But what happened is people started doing it in church. They're grabbing this guy's wife's hand or she's grabbing his hand and this guy. And they're going like this. What are they doing? Exercise? <laughs> I've seen that in churches. They're going like this. Absolutely. And that is so yes, distracting. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Very. Very. What's the purpose of this? Or, or this. Yes. I, mean, I guess my I point, by the way, was that when I said, oh, go ahead. Andy. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Well, no, my point was, do, does the, the power to be, are, it's in place, are they afraid of losing more well, no, I, I think what, what it is, it's, it's the idea that, first of all, when Benedict XVI was Pope, he was very strict on this. And when he wrote that book and put, he wanted this stuff to stop, and he said the reason why, it began to break down and stop. But the lady started doing it again. Because they were never told not to. And they were told not to from the pulpit. When Benedict was Pope. It was articles in Catholic periodicals and books and magazines. EWTN explained it. And those that needed to yeah. read that didn't. And the, yeah, exactly. Those that should have seen that didn't do it. And so they went back to this. Okay. Do you know how distracting that is when you're looking down and you're trying to say mass and you're seeing people do this? Oh. That belittles the priest. It does. Yeah, stop what you're doing and say, what kind of answer do you need because you're raising your hand? <laughs> it does. When people do this and the priest is saying mass... And especially at the consecration, this belittles the priesthood. It's like you're in a, you know, in a, a vacuum, and you're in your own world, and you're saying the mass. You are not to do this. The consecration of the mass is totally. The priest is the only one that can confect the Eucharist. So all this other nonsense has to stop. Especially at the consecration. And when the priest says, the Lord be with you, what are the people doing this for? What is that? You know what it is? It's a Roman sign of paganism. Look at some of these Roman movies. What did the tribunes do when they went in to see the emperor? They would walk in. Hail Caesar. You notice that? That was a Roman salute. And so this, you know, when people do this, what are they trying to do to the priest? Maybe, probably, Father, I'm, I, you know, just uh, my point is that they're returning 
Mm -hmm. Okay, that that's all that I would I would be saying. That yes, thinking this return the Lord be with you and also with you. But it's not to be. Well, it's not to be. There's nowhere in the documents of Vatican Council II or in the liturgy from uh, Pius V in the old liturgy or even in the new Roman Missal. It's very implicit. The priest. The father. The priest is the only one. Right. But I think that the priest needs to address that. In his it has to be done again. Mm -hmm. It was done when the changes, when the new Roman Missal came out. We did it in my parish. I explained everything to the people. I know a lot of the pastors in our area did it. They even gave you handout sheets from the diocese to put in the bulletins. That the third edition of the Roman Missal is coming out. Here's the instructions. I mean, what more can we do? People are taking society, secularism, into church. That's why there is no respect for the Blessed Sacrament, for authority, or for the church itself. Church buildings have become secondary places of gathering. After the mass is over, it's like you're at a ball game. Or before, pretty much. Yeah. You know, who's present there? I mean, this is what we are about. And if we deny that, Jesus himself says, you deny me, I will deny you. <coughs> so you're doing this, you're denied, forget about it, you're done. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm sign of peace is something entirely different the sign of peace the Roman Missal says you could extend your hand normally the priest and the deacon exchange it in the traditional Roman way no the, the priest and deacon do this which was a Jewish custom. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Say it again. So you're saying when the when the priest extends his hand to say, "The Lord be with you." Right. The that That's is it. just the priest. That's it. No one out there should be doing this or this. And you're speaking the word back. And the Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. With There's your spirit. no gesture needed. No gestures. No gestures. No. Gestures. no. Okay. Father, somebody said if your hands are up pointed toward heaven during the Mass, that you have extra angels around you that help you. Never heard that. <laughs> Not true. Never heard that. No. That's no. Simple no. Quiet. Never Thank heard you. that. Thank you, Father. You're welcome. Yeah, I really appreciate yeah. that. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. On page 44, the very thing we're talking about, there's in the next paragraph. Mm -hmm. Never fail to recognize the mystical presence of my mother in the Mass. She's mentioned in the Mass. If you listen closely, she is there at your side. She rejoices in your distribution of the fruits of my redemption and participates in it. The hands of every priest doesn't say laity. Jesus is not saying the lay people. He's saying here to the monk, the hands of every priest are in some way held in my mother's hands. So when the priest is communicating the liturgy, it's like Calvary. Who did John communicate with but Mary? Now do you see the picture, this stuff here? No. It's the act of communication of love. 
she acts with the priest. That's why she is in every Eucharistic prayer. Now do you get the picture? It's the priest that holds Mary's hands and she holds the priest's hands just as she did her son and St. John. That's the power of what now he's speaking here. So in the kiss of peace, we shouldn't be... The kiss of peace, yes, you can do that. Okay. Okay. Um, traditionally, I know in some places, like when I was down in Maryland not too long ago, um, at the John Paul II Center, what they do for the sign of peace there during the liturgy, and the priest there is uh, from Portugal, he taught the people, the students that come over from Catholic U, stand up a minute, at the sign of peace. You want to do that in the center so it can be on the... Yes. <laughs> what, they, what they did there for the sign of peace. When the priest says, let us offer each other a sign of peace, the students in the pew would turn to one another and do this. It was universal throughout that whole... John Paul II Center. Everybody did the same thing for the sign of peace. That's the, the old custom. Many Europeans do this when they greet one another. Oh, yes. very, very much. Okay? So it's the greeting. Okay. So all the students from Catholic University did that when we were there. So... You didn't see it? Okay. No. All right, we'll go back. <laughs> it cuts you off at the neck when you stand. So <laughs> move back a little further. Okay, how's that? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so at the sign of peace, like I said, at John Paul II Center, when we were there, the priest explained, he said, in, we taught the students when they come for Mass here, we do it this way for the sign of peace. So I said, you'll see them do that, in which we did. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Everybody did the same thing in all those pews. Okay? So we see this, and we're going to continue with this next time. So we thank you for joining us for this session of Insunu Yezu, and I ask you to read up to page 48. God be with you, and once again... If you need the text, you may go to catholicbook.net or stop in here at St. Raphael Center and you may purchase a copy. God bless you.